We've now got an action creator to load up our list of employees. We made a ref to our collection of employees, and then we watched for any new value to come across. Again, one thing to clarify here is that this is not only triggered when a new value is added by someone else, it is the generic event to say, just go and fetch some data from this location. In addition, this watcher right here, this event handler, will exist for the life cycle of our entire application. So we watch for this thing one time, and then any time any data is added to that employee's ref right here, by anyone, by anything, it's going to dispatch a new action. So one action creator watches this data source for our entire application's life cycle. Our next step is going to be to call this action creator and then receive the data in the reducer. Let's first call the action creator from the employee list component. You know what that means. We're going to have to import the action creator and the connect helper in here and call it from within the component itself. So we'll import connect from React Redux. Then we will import employees. We went with employees, right? Yes, employees fetch from actions. Then at the bottom, we can add on our connect helper. We don't have a map state to props just yet, so we'll leave in null for right now. And as the second argument, we'll give employees fetch. And then let's not forget to wrap employee list with a set of parens as well. And then finally, inside of our component, we, will, we want to fetch this list of employees or we want to start watching for employees to be loaded the instant that this component is about to be rendered to our device. So we'll add our lifecycle method, component will mount. So as soon as this component is about to be shown on the device, we will attempt to go get all those employees. This.props.employees fetch, like so. Cool. Now, the last thing we have to do is add a new reducer to receive this list of employees. Okay, this new reducer is going to have the sole purpose of holding our list of employees that are active for this user. So we'll make a completely new reducer. We are not going to try to use the uh, employee form reducer here because this has nothing to do with the form. This only has to do with the employees. So in my reducers folder, I'll make a new file called employee reducer. And then inside of here, we'll put in our boilerplate for a reducer. First, I will import employees fetch success from my types file. And then we'll place our initial state. We're going to use a uh, object as our initial state here. And you might be thinking, well, yo, Stephen, we are loading up like a list of employees. Wouldn't it just make sense to have an array of employees? Yeah, that's, that's definitely a very good thought, but let's, let's go on for just a little bit. Bear with me for a moment here, and then we're going to see exactly how Firebase loads this data for us. So next, we will export date default, our state, and we'll default it to our initial state. We've got our action, and then here comes the fun part. We're going to switch over action.type. By default, I want to return state and if we have an action with case employees fetch success all right this this right here is where things are going to be interesting so for right now i want to just console log our action and return my state okay so I'm, we're not going to do anything with the action just yet i want to specifically look at the action i want to see what data we're getting from firebase remember this action that's going to come across right here it is going to have as the payload whatever was on that snapshot.val. So whatever came back from snapshot.val, that is what the payload is going to be. And I want to specifically look at what that value is and what it's going to do for us. Now, the last thing we have to do is add this reducer to our combined reducers call. So in my reducers index.js file, we will import employee reducer from employee reducer. And I'm going to say my employees piece of state is going to come from my employee reducer. All right, so we've already created some number of employees, right? Like we, we've made some using the form. We've seen them in Firebase. 
So I think that we can immediately attempt to run this thing right here and get our console log. We should see at least you know, some number of employees come across. So I'll bring up my console. I will bring up my simulator. Let's do our refresh. And then I'll log back in. So the instant that I log in, I'm gonna transition over to the employee list component. And as soon as the employee list is about to be rendered on the screen of my device, it will call the action creator to load up the list of employees. We'll fetch the list of employees and eventually we'll see that console log. So I'm, be, I'm gonna expect to see the console log right away. We'll log in, I see employee list on the screen and here's the action. So the payload right here is what we really care about. So this object right here is what is containing our list of employees. So this is a very common data structure that you're going to see from Firebase. Rather than giving us an array of employees, which would be you know, quite useful, we get back an object containing all the different employees that we have. The keys of the object are the IDs of each employee. So if I want to make reference to like Jane specifically, I could reference an ID of KTTP, blah, 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 blah. And same thing for Alex, John, and so on. So rather than coming back as an array of employees, we get back an object. This is really a very common data structure that you're going to see in a lot of Redux apps. So you're going to see a lot of Redux applications using an object where the keys are the ID of the record as opposed to an array. The reason that you're going to end up with an object for storing data like this is to help with Redux's requirement of always returning a new object from Reducer. So this is, it is not only because of Redux that we do this, but it sure is a nice thing. That, that's what I should really be saying here. The reason for this is, you know, just think about if we wanted to uh, have an array of employees and update a very specific employee using a reducer, we would have to return a new array, remember, because we want to satisfy Redux's requirements. So we would have to go through our existing array, find the record we want to update, we would splice it out, and then splice in the updated record, and then also make sure that we return a new array so we would have to use the um, you know, the dot, dot, dot on there as well with the array because the spread syntax work, works with arrays as well. In contrast, updating a object full of records is a lot easier when we want to update some very specific record. I'm going to say this is just for example right here. We're not going to actually have this line of code. I'm just saying for example. So when we organize by ID, we can do something like this. So rather than walking through the array, finding the record we want to replace, we can just say, take all the records out of the existing object, you know, all the employees we have, create a new key value pair where the ID, or the, excuse me, the key is the ID of the record that we want to update, and then the value is the updated record itself. So with this syntax right here, it is so much easier to do than try to walk through an array and find the record that you want to update. So keeping track of your data, using an ID-based approach like this is pretty darn useful. So we don't really need to do any of that stuff. For right now, we just care about the list of employees that are coming back from Firebase. So we will replace this with just action.payload. So this is why we made our initial state an object. It is because eventually we're going to end up with an object containing all the different employees in our application. Okay, so this uh, wraps up our employee reducer. We're now keeping track of all the different employees in our application. Let's continue the next section and start working on rendering this list of employees to our users. Mm -hmm.